Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been forever since we made a video. We've been really trying to make content on these Talarias, but it's been snowing like mad. We've had a record-breaking snowfall year here in Utah. The ski resorts about 45 minutes away from the house here have received about 875 inches of snow. So that has surpassed every single record. Um, so I'm just gonna get out here and make a quick video while the snow is melting. It's starting to warm up, so we're hoping we can do some riding soon. But the mountains are just covered so deep. We've been snowmobiling, which has been awesome, but we're dying to get out on these bikes. So I just wanted to make a video going over um, all the mods I've done. I did, the very first video on the channel was a mods video on the mods I'd done to this bike. Um, and that was when I had just barely gotten it and I've done a whole lot more since. So we're gonna go over all the mods, what I've liked, what I've disliked, and talk about the last 1800 miles. I just ticked over 1800 and it's been a great experience. I've had no issues so far. So let's get into it. So straight away, we'll start with some of the big upgrades. Those are the KO Nano controller. So that is capable of running up to 17 kilowatts of power on the stock motor. And I've really enjoyed that. I haven't done a ton of rides on. I probably have 10 full battery cycles on that controller. Haven't had any issues. I've been able to, to start tuning it and getting it figured out. I've got my throttle feel where I like it. Um, it's a lot less jumpy than the stock throttle, the stock controller. So that's been a good setup and I'll get into more of that um, on a separate video. Um, my next major upgrade is this Manitou Dorado Expert fork. It's a pretty expensive fork. Um, it's up there, right up there with like the Fox 40, although I think it's a better fork than the Fox 40. You're not paying an upcharge just because it's a Fox product and it is the softest, most supple fork I've ever ridden. Um, I came from a mountain bike background I was kind of semi-professional in the cross-country scene and this fork is just excellent it is so good so I've really been liking that I put that on around Christmas time I have probably got 500 miles on it so it's been a great fork I have another video that I've been working on about the fork because it's had some weird quirks on like the installing process it's been fantastic once I got it on it's ran well and it's been an excellent fork and a huge upgrade um, from the DNM volcano that came on my bike um, in a previous video I talked a little bit about um, having my DNM volcano tuned by charge cycle works and that did help but then ultimately it still kind of failed after about a month of that upgrade they did full new oil seals, different spring, um, about as much as you can do to that fork. It was like $300. And it lasted for about a month and then started clicking every single cycle. So every time the fork would cycle, even just a little bit, it would click really bad. So I sent it back to them and I haven't gotten it back yet. I'm seeing if they can do anything for me. And I'll probably end up selling that fork um, if they can fix it. All right, now that we're done with the fork, let's talk about my handlebar setup and what I've got on there. So I am running an Envy Carbon Downhill Mountain Bike Bar. So this is a really stiff bar, um, also really light because it's carbon fiber. It's wider than the stock bar, um, and I've really liked it so far. I think I might go with something even taller. I generally don't love a super tall bar. I'm not a moto guy, I'm a mountain bike guy. So I may go a little taller at some point, but it's been working great for me. I'm running the stock stem. Um, I have the grit shift light on here this is their $50 light it's not the bottom tier I think it's the second tier up it's been a great light super wide beam um, I've ran that since I got the bike so I'm 1800 miles in that's still doing great I have this little super basic cheap um, headlight switch for it um, I also wired in the rear tail light to the switch as well normally this switch will only run the headlight and your tail light will always stay on I wired it up so that I can either have them both on or both off. So I can just have everything off. If I'm daytime riding trails, I don't need that on there. It's not a brake light, it's just a red light. So if I'm riding on the street, I always have my light on, just a little safer that way. So that's my handlebar setup. I even have this, um, I took this bell off my mountain bike. 
um, from a couple years ago. Really high quality bell. That's just for if I'm riding more single track trails and I come up on a runner or something that I need to pass. It's just a lot more polite and nicer sounding than the super loud horn. So that's been really good. Move into the back end. Um, I installed these, they're little Amazon pegs. I talked them about them in my other video. Um, they're like 30 bucks. I had to actually weld a spacer right here in the bottom so that they would sit level. Otherwise they would droop down, sag down. So if you have somebody that can weld, um, that's a great savings because they're very similar to the pegs that are like a hundred bucks on Grit Shift or any of those other companies. Um, I think they're very similar quality. So I've liked those, saved me a bunch of money. I also did the peg support brace. I know the newer Telarias and the Telaria R are already coming with this support brace, but mine didn't come with one. And that is definitely a must have because I was already seeing some bending and flexing in this just from using my kickstand. I'm still rocking the stock rear shock, but I did switch to the grit shift um, billet suspension linkage here. Um, I was hoping that would help with some of the rear suspension rattling, some of the sounds it makes. Um, I think it helped a little bit, but it's not a huge difference. I may eventually spring for this piece because um, you can get that as well and that's supposed to help with a little more rattling. That's a hundred bucks too um, for that linkage. So we'll see if I end up doing that or not. Um, I did upgrade my brake pads to some brake pads from a local company here in Utah. Um, MTX braking, they do some fantastic pads. And it's a huge difference from the stock ones. I've actually been fine with these brakes now that I switched to those pads. So I did that front and rear and I have, well, I have 1200 miles on my new pads and they're not even showing any signs of wear. They're not even close to being worn out. And I've pulled them out and kind of cleaned them a couple times just cause this bike gets so dirty and muddy and everything. I have a new sprocket that I've been running for a while. This is a Warp 9 52 tooth sprocket. I tried a Buddy's 58 tooth and I really liked the torque and being able to climb the really steep hills being able to wheelie a little better, but I didn't like it because it was so big that the chain would actually slap um, the chain stay right here and slap the guard. Just because of how big it was, the angle changed and it just made that happen. So I think this is a great in the middle chain ring, a lot bigger than the stock 44, but smaller than a 58 and it doesn't slap. So with the 58, I had to keep the chain tension really, really tight and I'd have to tighten it like every ride to get it to not slap. So this has been a great balance for me. It's super dirty right now. I just got back from Southern Utah, so I'm gonna give it a clean, um, that red Southern Utah dirt. So we also did our seat upgrade kit on this. Um, you can see those spacers in there. All we do is just raise the front of the seat up so it's essentially level. Kind of looks like it's going straight up when I put the camera like this, but it's not basically just gets rid of that stink bug like effect that these bikes have and that has been a, an awesome upgrade and just really helps on the longer rides. This fender does not come with the Manitou Dorado. It's from my DNM Volcano and we just jerry rigged it by putting a couple of holes in this and running some zip ties on each side. It's pretty snug, works good. Um, I do want to clarify, I do have a stock battery still. I have a stock battery, it has not been bypassed. I'm thinking about bypassing it, but I'm also just saving up for an upgraded battery to go with my controller. I still think the controller is an upgrade from stock because I get rid of the motor RPM limit and I'm able to go about 50 miles an hour on flat, even with the bigger sprocket. Normally with the big sprocket, you're limited to a lot slower. My brother Reed, he's limited to about 38 miles an hour with his big sprocket and his stock controller. So I'm able to get going a lot faster. You've got the full tunability, you can tune your throttle. Um, and that is really nice. I'm looking at a Chai battery, um, the new Telaria version, the 60 volt, probably the 75 amp hour, the biggest one they make to be able to just have massive range. But those are still 2,600 bucks, 2,700 bucks. So saving up for one of those, that's a big, 
big expense for me, but I really like this bike and I think I'm gonna do it. I think that's gonna wrap up all the upgrades that I have. It's been a fantastic bike. Like I said, I just passed 1,800 miles. I would say about two thirds of that are off-road miles, um, pretty hard and fast miles. I've not been easy on this bike. I've taken it in some extreme mud. Um, I may insert a picture of, of how muddy this bike got because it was insane. I kind of went down a trail I shouldn't have gone down and it ended up pretty rough. I had to spend a lot of time with a hose and a pressure washer. Um, but I've done a couple oil, oil changes. I've gone through three rear tires and this is my second front tire. Um, they wear down pretty fast in that many miles, but it's been a great bike. Um, I would love to get a Talaria Sting R, but I think I've already done pretty much all the upgrades that that bike comes with. So I'm just gonna stick with this model. I may get an upgraded battery, like I said, or I will just as soon as I can afford it. Thanks for watching, guys. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. We're on our road to 1,000 subscribers. We're getting really close, and we're going to keep making content just as quick as we can. As soon as all this freaking snow melts, we'll be up in the mountains riding. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you next video. See ya.